Talk about what's happening with the census right now, and is, is it still is it not too late for people to sign up for it? Oh, so let me answer this first, the second question first. It is absolutely not too late for people to sign up. In fact, we are amplifying our, and, and really boosting our census outreach at the Center for Law and Social Justice at Megarvis College because the Census Bureau has essentially extended their timeline through, I think it's the end of October. And so we plan on also doing the same. And we will be doing outreach and advocacy um, on the census from now until that point. And then once October hits, we will then shift into redistricting, which is the next step. Uh, in the census process. Um, And what's really happening right now is that the Trump administration, um, as you mentioned, they did try to uh, put a citizenship question on the census. And they did that because they knew, and we know that they knew because this was part of the evidence that was introduced into court, they knew that not only would that discourage black and brown people from filling out the census, but it would also be beneficial to white Republican races, Um, not racists. Races. I want to be clear on my pronunciation. Um, and so that effort was defeated in court. Um, but what's happening now is that Trump, uh, the administration has issued an executive order or is, uh, and basically saying that they are not going to be including um, illegal, quote unquote, immigrants from the apportionment base. And when you mentioned earlier that there are some people who are here illegally, some who, are, who are, may not be here legally, but who are still using services, representation is dependent upon you being a person, not you being a citizen, because there are some people who are here legally but who are not citizens. They, too, are using, uh, they're going to the hospitals, they're going to our schools, they're help, They're putting money into the economy by working and paying taxes. And so whether you are a citizen or not, the Constitution requires a count of every single person, regardless of citizenship, because, frankly, when you are stuck in a big major traffic jam, you think about the worst traffic jam you've ever been in, You didn't know the citizenship of the people in the cars next to you. The traffic light doesn't know the citizenship of the people in the cars that it has to regulate. It just knows that there are cars, there are people they have to regulate based on population. When you go to school, the teacher doesn't know necessarily your background and your ethnic background or your citizenship background. When you go to a hospital, the doctor doesn't know your citizenship background because you are a person. When you are, repre- be, when you are part of a democracy, you are being represented by elected officials, and that representation is based on total population count. That's why making sure you have an accurate count for everyone in your community is so important. So what the Trump administration is trying to do, which is essentially it is illegal, um, there are going to be lawsuits filed. Uh, <laughs> if they have not been filed already, they will be filed post haste because this is an illegal effort to essentially, one, scare people of color, to scare the immigrant community um, into thinking that they should not be filling out the census. That is a, it is a bold-faced lie. You absolutely should be filling out the census. You can do so at my2020census.gov. Um, and what you need to be uh, aware of is that just because the president puts information out there, doesn't mean it's true, doesn't mean it's accurate. Um, And as a result, he is trying to basically say that people who are not legal immigrants will not be counted. And there's no way for them to know who's a legal immigrant versus not, because there's no question about citizenship on the census itself. So this is another fear tactic. It's another scare tactic to try to discourage people from filling out the census. And they don't want people of color and communities of color filling out the census, because every time your community shows up 100% for the census, that means the man, and we all know who the man is, has to share political power and has to share financial resources with your community. And so we are doubling down, tripling down, quadrupling down, fill out that census, my2020census.gov. When I filled out the census, there were six people living in my household. It took me seven and a half minutes to complete the census. There's nothing about your Social Security number on the census. There's nothing about your citizenship on the census. It wants to know who you are, what your name is, what the name and the birth dates of the people who live with you. Do you own or rent your home? And uh, what is your race and nationality? That's it. And that data is then fed into thousands of federal formula to determine how much money your community is going to get for the next 10 years for every program from schools, after school programs, libraries, hospitals, health care. And all these things are transportation, much more buses transportation. and trains. Absolutely. And as we're now coming out of a pandemic, well, some of us are coming out of the pandemic. Some of us are just beginning to experience back the, in. Uh, the yeah. first wave. That's right. 
that the next decade is really going to be about recovery. And for a lot of those communities that had underfunded medical facilities uh, to respond to the COVID-19 crisis, that is largely because in 2020, our hospitals are still funded based on the census data from 2010. So if you live in a community that in 2010 did not have a full accurate census count, your hospitals literally did not have the funding or the population to justify funding the health care that systems that you need. And so as we continue to move towards recovery and coming out of the pandemic, we have to make sure our communities are counted because that is the only way that we're going to get the financial resources and the political representation that we need in order to make sure we're protected and that we count. And for everybody who says, you know, well, why can't the president do this if it's not legal? Let me just be clear. Somebody that I uh, was in business a long, long time ago with someone who did something nefarious. And he said, don't worry, they'll sue us, but then we'll start a new corporation. And I was like, exit stage left. I'm never going to be in business with you. But people do this mm. routinely because they understand the legal system. That's why yes. this man, this president, went bankrupt six times because he understood the system that he could just not pay people, keep his wealth, and then move on and form a new corporation. And so That's he's doing exactly the same right. thing with America in many ways, doing things that he knows Y'all, y'all are going to spend all of this time in court, and but the message is out there. And the effect right. is very clear because if you can scare people right now into not doing what they need to do for themselves, then you've won. And, yeah, you'll exactly. lose in court, but when? Next year? And right. I may be reelected the by then. Oh, right. and I got the judges. Didn't I just put a whole lot of judges? In? Yeah, yeah. So, judges. 200 judges now in which is office what? under Trump administration. 